Hello everyone and welcome back to Wargame Red Dragon. We have another ranked game for you guys today, another community cast as well, and another striker game. So three in a row right there for you guys. And this one was submitted by the major Bikefish, who previously had really struggled against striker. I think um, it's fair to say there have been a number of games where it just hasn't really worked out too well for the currently Red 4 player who I did get this replay from. And now, usually when I get a replay, I'll you know, look at it from the perspective of the person who sent it in, but this one in particular I wanted to look at from Stryker's perspective just because there were a number of things there that were really interesting um, to see. You know, unusual characteristics of a game, um, positioning that wasn't expected, the, the little things that I think make this such a hard matchup if you aren't expecting or you haven't played against him before. I mean, my first game against Stryker was really tough. Uh, and it had a lot of unexpected encounters. So F15J there from Striker getting out unscathed is a little bit unfortunate, but really not because you'd expect to get the kill, but because it does use the anti-air missiles on the Patu Tiger and Tiger Hap from red, which instant pullback from blue. And he's playing, so Striker is currently playing blue on spec, which had been an unusual thing for him, I think, for a little bit. He mostly played USSR, but I've seen this deck a couple of times, I've never played against it, but I've seen other people play against it now four or five times, maybe? Or no, I think I did play against it once. Yeah, I played against it once. Um, it's a little unusual. Blue on spec is, I think, a bit less common than blue moto, so what'll happen a lot of times is people will see the opener and they'll think, okay, well this is blue moto, because you have the South African Rathals, you have the Vabs, you have the Ruakot 76s, Everything here looks kind of like Blue Moto, especially with the Veteran C on the Casper K car. So you're looking at this early on, you're you know calling in your initial reinforcements, thinking to yourself, okay, well, I'm playing a Moto deck, and then all of a sudden 2A1 and L show up, which I do love the fact that this is the Dutch version. Uh, no MG3, but definitely more style points there. And so far, pretty standard opener, to be honest. So going right down here a little bit light on the highway. This can sometimes be an issue if red opens into delta pretty heavily, but Bikefish is playing a little cagey. Some of his stuff is over here. False Kamiagri will spot that, and only a single recon infantry to Charlie. This is the same thing that I do for decks that don't have more cost-effective ways of getting over into Charlie, so uh, it did look pretty familiar to me there. 1390s, Panther... Yeah, so... I think... The cool thing about Striker's deployment right now is that he did get very early into this town, which is, I think, critical for this side of the field. Um, he's got at least the town here. It's a little unclear who really has better map control. It's sort of, uh, it's about the 50-50 line, to be honest. This is a bit red favored in Delta, but my guess is that red's mostly back here anyway, so we have a bit of a no man's land. Um, but picks like that really do hurt. So. Buffalo 85 being able to shoot, I think, twice in order to get the kill, landing both, which is a little uncommon, and killing that Martyr 2, and then this is how Striker plays. So he will, usually anyway, sit back and look for pickups when his opponent is being a little bit reckless, a little bit careless, and this Tiger Hap is definitely something that meets the uh, definition here. Now, SAS aren't the best, but... That was a nice 100 point swing in favor of Stryker, and he just pulled back out of range of that Tiger Hap, and then now that that's dead, immediate exploit. So he knows that the Tiger Hap is dead, he's going to go forward with the Gazelle Canon, go for the Lynx, just enough to see if there's anything else back there, and then following up on the ground. And this is really good, it's um... Ooh, my apologies. I've had to start recording a little later. It's kind of getting to me a little bit, um, but it's a powerful combo. I mean, the MX-10 RCs getting chewed through, three frontal armor on those guys really isn't a lot, and Lynx H7, really nice control there, taking out both of those. So on this side, we've seen 180 points die from Bikefish pretty early. We're at 34 minutes in, that's about, well, 34 and a half. So that's about, what's uh, 1,550 or so and counting uh, points of income so far. So it's a reasonable percentage, it's over 10% of everything Bikefish has on the map just died. Which, that's a pretty quick swing, right? So this I do really like from Bikefish, there were some elite infantry in there as well, and you stop mortaring yourself a little bit, but we've all done it from time to time, and the Vab out of nowhere 
looking to see if Bravo has any protection. So if you are playing over on this side, take note. Striker is playing very defensively now. Earlier on, there was a bit more with the commando, with the recon infantry here. It looks like a solid line. But now that that's gone, we have a bit more just of a curved surface here. So Striker is playing in Echo, he's playing in Delta, very defensive here, only a couple of eyes over in Golf Charlie. And you might think, you know, this is Conquest. This is the game mode where we try and get a lot of map control. And really, even that opener wasn't very aggressive. The 2A1 NLs came up here, they're just waiting. The Commando Para just waiting, most of the stuff just waiting and waiting and waiting. Uh, by the way, should have seen this is deployed. Infantry CV because of the Panther touchdown immediate cap. So Striker did see that, just in case you are watching this bike. I um, I know he didn't really seem to take advantage of it during the game, but uh, there is already a Rhino out. It could have positioned and fired on there. He might have thought he'd done it. Uh, he had done it. He might have just not seen the Panther. There was a lot going on uh, across the whole front. And this is the beginning of why I really, when I watch this replay, which I don't always do for community casts, but I saw a part of this game live, and I, I wanted to kind of look at it for that. This is why I wanted to do it from Striker's perspective, because this, to me, I would feel like I'm in such a losing position here. And yet this game goes to time, right? Or very nearly so. So clearly, clearly this does not lose him the game as quickly as I would feel like it would lose it for me. And maybe that's because he has more stuff alive. He still has the short arrow. He still has the two A1s. He's just not really engaging. But I don't know. It, it just, it seems a very fragile position. And even with that, we have a cap on Echo very early, and Delta can be capped by blue, but not without being counter-capped by red, which this, you'd think, would be sort of concerning for blue, sort of concerning for Striker, um, because he's threatening to just lose that plus one tick to red, right? If Golf and Charlie, although they are currently neutral, I mean, it won't necessarily stay that way, Leclerc there from Striker coming in, or not from Striker, from Bikefish coming in. And it's just boxes, but this does slow everything down on this side. It does sort of factor in to buys that Blue now has to make. And this is something else I thought was really interesting. So the second that Vab gets over there, for me, I'm going to sneak more. It's sort of just in my nature. i um, rather sneaky fellow in this game. Uh, instead of reinforcing in here, where we've already seen stuff die, more Legion are dead, the Flak Panzers are spotted, this seems like a feed, this seems like opportunity. And the units that you have going in here to, to take advantage of this opportunity, I mean, yeah, it's working out pretty well. Uh, but I would always, I would sneak more on the ground. So during the game, I think uh, you didn't expect him to have a short arrow over here. And I'd say it is really a sort of unexpected thing, but when you think about it, he has the Gazelkin on, the short arrow is track speed, which isn't, well, no, sorry, it's wheeled speed, so it can get away. And if he sees any infantry coming up, he's just going to retreat back. This is the biggest risk, that you had some sort of tank gun on this side. But it's not unreasonable to assume that you didn't. Uh, another thing too, part of why everything over here got spotted the whole time. Look how far forward these Commandos Para are. This is great. This is really awesome. Uh, this is something I'm going to try to do in, in my games on this map as well. Just get up here, move forward, get a forward position in the woods. He actually counter-spotted your infantry there, which... If that's an ATGM team, that's going to die quickly. Uh, it's just, it's a nice position, right? And that sort of positional recon is what allows Striker to do what he wants to do, get picks like this, and be yeah, be annoying to his opponents that way. Not for the sake of being annoying, Don't please don't hear that. It's just, having been on the receiving end of this sort of play before, it's very annoying to feel like no matter where you go, you're dying before you even get there, and that is the sort of game that it feels like Striker is trying to play here, because otherwise these 2A1s would be already out and moving, you know, people have these whole mechanized columns going in, and they pull the tanks out, and it's all this whole big hullabaloo and all that, and this is the first time the tanks have even fired their guns, but it's worthwhile. They're killing Legion 90 in the open, which is that's a lot of points there man that's that's a lot of value so there it is he comes out when he sees value it's gone okay pull back so this is the point where i stopped seeing this game live i have looked a little bit past it uh for the replay but not far past it i actually don't 
We really know how this game ends beyond a brief description from Bikefish. Um, so it's, it'll be interesting, I think, to see how this one comes out. And we're going up speed two for a fair bit of it because it has been a bit slower play. If you do ever go up against Striker in ranked, this is not uncommon for him. This is actually reasonably common to have longer games uh, unless you blow right through his center at the beginning, which I've seen it done. I've not done it myself. But uh, I think I got him to surrender one time in about 27, 28 minutes. But yeah, nothing faster than that. That is a little terrifying. Did he get it? No. Okay. Yeah, F-15J. Not the world's most common helicopter hunter. But if it works... Okay, this is really good. Yeah, this is really good. So this is uh, why a lot of people will tell you when you play on this map to control the highway. So red right now is sneaking forward. It has ATGMs. It has... Fighting capable stuff that is, let's turn around here, probably on this diagonal. If I don't miss my guess, there's probably some stuff here. There might be something here, maybe not. If there's not, then it's all the way through on this side. Let's take a peek. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is really good. So just look at look at the shape of this deployment compared to the shape of the deployment from Striker. And you might think, okay, well, this is really good for red. Look at the unit density. Charlie, basically no unit density. How do you deal with a push here? How do you deal with helicopters or things like that? Just the Tiger, it's out of stingers. While as Striker, oh, he is going in for a push. Because he's so much more condensed, most of his area has support against pretty much any unit, which comes at the cost of flexibility, comes at the cost of, of map control. And it's very much two competing ways of playing the game. Do you go to take positions and then make your opponent push you? Or did you try and just get trades and play that slow game? Which, to be quite frank, I think um, I think Striker is playing a mechanized playstyle with an unspec deck, which, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then it certainly will be trouble. 2A4 is spotted. There's more false Grimjager here. Would have been really nice if Red could keep this position, but it is hard to do, especially with the amount of fire support that's coming in. Triple 2A1 on L, and even that Leclerc just boogied on out of there because at close range, these guys will kill the Leclerc before the Leclerc can get its licks in. So, that was a little bit rough. 2A4. Oh, this is perfect. Come on, come on, come on. Side shot. Yeah, one side shot. Okay, that's rough. Ooh. Yeah, okay. So, 2A4 is down. Uh, but, I mean... Two 2A1s were lost in that, and the other one's down to two strength. It's not the best trade that you want to be taking, and this is overchasing, by the way. That 2A1 should have gotten out of dodge, because even two armor on that Leclerc, Leclerc's have really fast fire rates compared to things like 2A1s, and they're just going to get that next shot. So it's not a duel you want to take, and he took it. And that's 300 points of tanks lost, 140 points of revenge there for the 2A4, but the Leclerc getting out means that now Striker is almost certainly playing at a disadvantage. However... That's only in terms of the act the actual points on the ground. In terms of tick, he's getting tick. 43 to 27, plus one for striker. And that is dangerous, especially with now that this is prepped, there's infantry, there's Zelda, there's a rule cut 76. This technically speaking has all the components of a combined arms push. And defending is an Amex 13, a couple of reservists, and a CV. Right, so. You would expect this to go decently well for Striker over in Charlie, which, if he can extend his line there, that is starting to look pretty good. If he can counter cap in Charlie, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not ideal. And again, this is spotted coming in. So, uh, with these, with the helicopters against somebody who has really good recon, or even just anyone moderate higher rank, it seems a little bit over aggressive to come in like that. Yeah, this is moving. But if they're really dedicated with artillery, you can find it, or at least narrow it down. Uh, what I probably would have done is I would have taken two mortars and just tried to find some fires there and see, eventually it'll move. I know it's an infantry CV, so if I start fires, it'll walk away. And that works just well for me. And in the meantime, this quite across the front as well. I think this was the opportunity to push and to make it a smaller, a shorter game. If we take a look at neutral, maybe not. Leclerc needs to be healed up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's incoming, right? It's incoming. 
Uh, it would have been also pretty nice to this. I don't know if you take them in your deck, but Martyr 2s I think would be really excellent here. Now that the 2A1s are dead. Right, with the 2A1s there, it's not a great thing. And, okay, H.A. Abrams. Yeah, you gotta. he has to fight the Leclerc somehow, but that H.A. will die horribly. Oh no, did the Tiger die? No, very nice. Goodness gracious, stealth helicopters are busted sometimes. I would have assumed I got it, I think. Uh, or fall. Very nice. Very, very nice. And I guess the difficulty here is making sure that Charlie is safe while also building up the points to make sure Delta is safe enough for a cap. Because if this is capped without proper support, then it can get pushed pretty easily. But... This is almost the situation we have right now for blue. So Mech Inf 90 times 2, Gurk is 90. There's a fair amount of infantry here. And that HA, the sight lines on this thing are going to be kind of down here. But the two hedgerows really do shorten it more than you'd think. Uh, and then over on this side. So it is zoning. It is zoning. That's for sure. Uh, I think what I would probably do is you push up from the highway. So you smoke this off. And you get in here with more infantry, and you go right down the pipe. And with your advance, you can smoke along this side. And this is more coordination than I've had in recent games. You'll notice I've done a fair amount of community casts. I've been doing a couple of team games. And so I recently got to Brigadier General, and um, so one of my accounts is Brigadier, one is Colonel, because I have a smurf, which, yeah, I know, it's not exactly the best thing ever. But I got it because I got the channel, and I was concerned... I'd stay forever a private, so now I use one to, to push on ranked, and then I use the other to sort of experiment with decks and things like that in 1v1, which I'm looking for a new deck to to try to get to Brigadier Gen General again, and I can't find one that I like, so it's been a little bit rough. I've tried Commonwealth, I've tried Eurocore, Eurocore, just no, please never again. Uh, Commonwealth, maybe... But I almost feel like Commonwealth just makes a better mech deck, and it's really unfortunate because I really want to like that deck, and yet it's just awkward. It's it's just awkward enough to to make it um, to make it uncomfortable. So yeah, I mean this is yeah this is beautiful. This is sort of what I was talking about with us, uh, you know, going up here needing to push this, and yeah, with the Claire leading the way, I still would like to see some Martyr twos, but the Claire will yeah so. With Martyr 2s and with some more infantry numbers, I think this becomes a lot easier because the Mech Inf and the Rovate and all this will die to the Martyr 2 fire support and that Leclerc can zone out the M1HA Abrams because it really doesn't have to be that afraid of Buffalo's 85. At least I, I would say probably not. It's the biggest threat right now. Okay, Delta's counter capped. Yeah, this is good. I mean, 54 to 41, Bikefish does have some ground to make up and... Yeah, this is the biggest threat. If Blue can get back into Charlie in the next five minutes, then I'd say it's going to be a very hard game for Red to win. That flips it back to... A, uh, well, it flips it back to zero. Yeah, it flips it back to zero, which right now would be a tie, by the way. 10% of the loser's points. So right now that value is five, within five points. And it's a tie. Oh, that's unfortunate. Down on AMX 10 because of roll of 90. <laughs> I mean, I, I laugh, but they have 16 AP, 20 RPM. It's nothing to slouch at. Nothing to. It is no slouch. It's nothing to scoff at. There we go. There we go. Words. Words, words, words. Okay. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Ah, that hurts. That really hurts. Yeah, okay. So the question is how you prevent this, and to be quite honest with you, I'm not entirely sure, because... Um, because the force concentration, sorry, pardon me, um, can't stop yawning tonight. The force concentration here is nice, and that second H.A. Abrams is definitely a thing to worry about, so, so red has to play over the zone, but at the same time, I, I almost think the CV and Charlie was a little bit impetuous, um, because it closed the gap a little bit. But it also prevented a lot of buys here, and Bikefish, compared to, I mean, taking the time to buy these two HAs really did a lot for Striker's position in Delta, but they're not true super heavies, so a second Leclerc can take these out. 
even the one Leclerc, if you have enough numbers in front of it, and you do have Reservists, would make this a reasonably tough fight. The HA shoot at the Reservist and the VAB, and then you engage. Oh no. No, 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 no. Yeah, so this is actually why... Yeah, okay, nice. Good reaction. You saw that it was uh, spotted, pulled it back. Very nice indeed. The issue is now Striker knows it's somewhere back here. Uh, but that's part of why getting these recon infantry so far forward is amazing, because I'm pretty sure it's the Commando's Para that saw that. Uh, right into the edge of the woods, it's within their optics range. So that's probably it. And these guys have been alive the whole game, weapons off, just saying, hey, we're not going to fight, we're just here to take a look around, we're going to have some fun at your expense. And that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's great positioning. This is, I gotta say, Blue, Striker, the guy who we're watching, it's just such a meticulous playstyle. Even if I don't necessarily agree with all the maneuvers or things like that. Yeah, here we are, lots of reservists. Even if I don't agree with all the positioning necessarily, or the, the buy order, or you know, the nitty gritty of stuff like that, I I would not like to fight against this. It really is just uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough no matter what you do. Oh, don't lose the Leclerc. Do not lose the Leclerc. Yeah, the way that Leclerc loses is by taking a close an engagement against both of these Abrams, and that is a really unlucky crit. So one of the HAs is detracked, the other one is not, but. That's a really bad position to be detracked, especially if... Oh, okay. So, your units auto-face the nearest unit. If there are infantry over here, yep, side shot. Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> God. Single 2A4, and both the HAs go down. Yeah. This this is a perfect illustration of what Bikefish is doing right, that Striker is doing wrong here, which is controlling the center of the highway. You can't play out there unless you have control over more than just that little fragile section. It doesn't work. It really doesn't. But with that said, it does look like Striker got the kill on the red CV and Delta. And he's taking plus one. Yeah, this is nice. I don't know when this stuff came in. But that's a really good thing because it means that neither did, oh, geez. Neither did Striker. Uh, almost feels like I need some armor support though to really make that work. Nice pullback on the Oxiri. Cap on Delta, there's the plus one. 96 to 78, 10% of the loser's points is currently eight. So that has to get up to about uh, 88, depending on how they do rounding, it might be 87. Not entirely sure. Uh, roughly 10% before it's a tie again. Otherwise, Striker is taking home the W in this one. And with eight minutes left in the match, we have been going up plus two for quite a while now. And it really didn't feel like that though, did it? It felt kind of like a... Other than that tank engagement here, this game to me, the positioning, the rate of those engagements, it felt a lot like a regular game, even though we're playing at double speed, which I think that says something. I think it's kind of goofy. So, 96 points to 95, Rafal, what are you doing? Oh no. Yeah, dead Rafal. Hmm. Might have been trying to hover it sort of back here. Stealth planes are a little goofy as well, but uh, this is good. So there's a counter cap in Charlie. Yet again, a little bit risky just because the roving Ruakot 76 squad. Uh, and this is anti-air defense. It's not going to be able to really pen here. Oh geez, they have just paper armor, don't they? Yeah. That's good, that's good. Tiger. Yeah. Okay, we'll slow it down. There's a lot going on. This... That defense in Charlie right there, I think, is going to win the game for, for Red, even though, yeah, I mean, there's a Kurnos coming in, but very dominant position over here now with the 2A4, just keep that alive, bring that Leclerc back up, take the Legion forward, and you don't have to actually push all the way into Bravo, it's a hard push to do, because this town is very effective, oh, don't lose that, that's lucky, um, but holding even right here, can make Delta entirely Red's possession. So if that's locked down and there's a tie over in Golf, Golf Charlie, well, I guess over in Charlie right now, then that's going to be a win as of a couple seconds ago for Bikefish. It's nice to see you get some revenge, man. <laughs> I, uh, I very much know what it's like to lose to one particular person on ranked a couple times, and by the end of it, you start to go, oh no, the next time, you know, next time I'll get you, next time I'll get you, and always next time I'll get you. And sometimes it works out, and sometimes next time they get you, and it just is what it is. 
These Legion need to be moving. They've been spotted for way too long. I don't know by what. Uh, it might be these guys. Yeah. Just, again, really excellent. The, there's not... I'm not saying that I would take a lot from Striker's playstyle and adapt it myself. It's just not my style of play. But certainly the the recompositioning here I think has been pretty good. It's been one of the highlights of Blue's play is actually getting those eyes forward. The issue is you get that far forward and now you're driving a 2A, 2A1 NL blind. And the reason is because, well, none of your recon survived. So that is the risk that you run with that sort of forward positioning. Like imagine right now, oh no. Gurkhas versus Fuchs, dead. Still a plus one, Golf Delta, yeah. That was a plus two, that would've been really nice. Really nice. Mm. Um, the issue with aggressive recon is that you risk one of two things. First, losing it and having to rebuy it and spending all your points that way. And second, once it's dead, it's dead. And that makes the rest of your force sort of inoperable until you get that problem fixed. So... That's the way, um... That's the way I think you take care of this, and actually artillery can help a lot with that. Because, like, these commandos pair are right here. Pretty predictable position, and I think they've seen, I mean, they've definitely seen combat. So, the second you make combat, you just take three mortars and you mortar the entire position, and it... It gets real sad real quick for the for the infantry there. They might survive on one or two strength, but even then, uh, then blue would have to either pull them back, heal them, and put them up, or a stiff breeze will knock over the remaining men, and it really won't look too good for the recon then. Interesting. Another thing I'll say for Striker is that he very much does switch the area of engagement. And much as this is a, is a strength, because, I mean, look, it's taken back Charlie twice now. As much as this is a strength, I think it's also potentially a weakness. And one that I might well exploit, because by putting so much over here... Oh, had to miss the second shot. It's unfortunate. By investing that much over there, if you go up against somebody who's really aggressive in the, the middle lane, or not necessarily the middle, but whatever lane they pick first, that is a nice way, nice CV call. Uh, that's a nice way to lose, because while you're going, okay, well this is fine for right now, let's get like 4 minutes of income over here, I guarantee you they slammed all 400 right into another push, and you don't want to end up inside of Bravo, so uh, I think I think it was a good thing for Red to have enough over in Charlie to make Blue work for it, but beyond that, I almost would say that the way that you play against Striker on a map this wide is you poke and prod with a couple of weak recon units that force an investment and force a response from striker and then after that you just jam everything down the middle because these tank engagements went really well even the one that was a little bit goofy with the 2a4 coming up and taking those shots i mean it's plays like that that can win you or lose you and quite frankly the game so yeah, there it is. That's the game Striker versus Bikefish, Lieutenant Colonel versus Major, and today it does look like Bikefish will take the win. So 152 points, two minutes left possible in the game, but we're going to get a surrender before then. And part of the reason for that is because now, as time goes on, Striker needs a plus three or a plus four. It's just not going to happen. So a little bit rough there as well. Oh no. Legion 90 versus Oxidate Picoud. There it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame him for hauling off about a minute or so early. It's just going to be a, a victory for Bikefish anyway. So, in terms of kills losses, 30-35 for Striker, 27-10 for Bikefish. And Striker, I think, is still getting those really nice pickups on you when he shouldn't. And I don't, I don't really know what to say about it that hasn't already been said, but uh, I think just a high and tight game, a concentrated front, maybe a little bit of sneaking, but, you know, just don't offer him those mistakes and all of a sudden his gameplay becomes passive and defensive and that is not a great way to win conquest so deny him the trade and he won't be aggressive all right bike fish i hope you enjoyed that for everyone else watching thank you all for hanging around and we'll see you again real soon